Hi Data Wizards! Today we'll be doing scenario analysis. So in scenario analysis, like the name implies, we evaluate different scenarios or assumptions to see what their outcome would be. Scenario analysis is a great asset for any financial professional to have in his inventory, as it can be used in almost any circumstance that is dealing with understanding what is your risk. Also a great asset to any financial professional is this segue to Zebra BI. Visualize your financial data like never before. Zebra BI is available on all major platforms that deal with data and visualizations. Go into the description below and download Zebra BI now completely free. But before we start with scenario analysis, let's look at our data. And we have our data today in Power BI. So here we have a fictional PL statement that will be the basis of our scenario analysis. So the scenario that we'll be looking into today is hiring a new sales team. And with that, hopefully driving up our revenues and our operating income. So that's where we're going to stop our analysis today. We're just going to go from revenues to operating income and we're going to discard all the rest. We don't need it for this simple presentation. All right, sounds easy enough, but doing this in Power BI would really require me to know quite a lot of complicated DAX functions and making all these kinds of things in the data model, quite a lot of hassle for me. And since I feel a lot better at home in Excel, maybe I'll just use Power BI as my data source and I'll do the calculations in Excel. Yeah, that sounds good. So come on, let's do this. Let's go into Excel and let's lose Power BI as our source. So getting Power BI as a data source in Excel, it's pretty easy. So first what you want to do is navigate to the data tab and then click on get data. This will open a drop down menu on which choose Power Platform. And from there, of course, just click on from Power BI. This opens a new window where we can see all of our published reports on our Power BI server. And now I'll just find my demo file and simply click on insert pivot table. And in just a couple of seconds, we now have access to all the measures, dimensions, the whole data model that we had in Power BI. Now please follow me into Excel where we will start our scenario analysis. And again, welcome to Excel. While you were traveling, I already prepared my pivot table from the data from Power BI. You can see it right down here. What I did was simply take our actual data that goes from our revenues down to our operating income. Now let's talk about our scenario. What we want to do is hire a new sales team. So the team will be made up of 10 salespeople, each costing us 200,000 euros a year. So 10 team size and each costing us 200,000. But on the other hand, we believe that hiring this new team will help us grow our revenues by at least 2%. So now what we want to know is how the performance of the sales team will actually impact our operating income. So in other words, what has to be the performance of the sales team to at least give us back a return on our investment? Now let's calculate this scenario. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy everything from this pivot table right here down here and now just calling this actual and I will call this my forecast for now and although I could do all the formulas from my pivot table if I just show you when I make a reference to a pivot table number it gives us this long get pivot data formula which is nothing wrong and I would usually go for this, but just for demonstration purposes, it's gonna be a lot easier to follow the calculations if we just do it here from our array. All right, so delete this. All right, and now if we said that we will hire 10 people and they will increase our revenue by 2%, that means that our forecast for revenues will be revenues plus revenues times the 2% increase. Yeah, that makes sense, right? All right, and we get the new number for our, our revenues. 
So the costs of goods sold are interesting here because the more goods that we sell, the more costs we're actually producing, right? So what we can do here is make, make just a little helper uh, calculation, just calling it um, COGS ratio, where we just simply calculate how much costs actually represent of our revenues. So we're just going to take this and divide it by our revenues. So the new formula for our COGS will be plus all the COGS, then plus revenues times the 2% increase times the 38% that our cost represents. So we're just going to take 38% of the increase of our revenues. That's it. All right, looks about right. And our gross margin is a simple calculation of revenues minus COGS. All right, now for operating expenses. So operating expenses here will have something to do with the cost of our sales team. So if each of our team members will cost 200,000 euros a year, we have to add this somewhere into our calculation. And this is exactly where uh, we would put it in operating expenses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say operating expenses that we had until now. And then in addition, team size times the cost of a single person, right? There we go. All right, looks about right. So we add two million to this. And our operating income is again, just a simple gross margin minus our operating expenses. And all right, we have our calculation. I will just make this into numbers. Just change the formatting. There we go. Okay, so it's easier to see. And now we have a nice little showing. Uh, of our forecast, if we hire 10 people, they have to increase the revenues at least for 2% and we would actually make a return on our investment. But what we'd like to know is what happens in different scenarios. So what if our sales team only manages a 1% increase in revenues? Or what if they're doing really good and they would have the increase in revenues be 3% or maybe even 4%? Well, this is where uh, this kind of analysis actually comes into play. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check these different scenarios. We are just going to copy these names right here. And now what we have to do is simply link the calculations that we made right here to our categories. Okay, so just like this. So it's just a simple, it's just a simple uh, connection to a cell. Now, above here, what we want to do is have our scenarios. All right. And what we're, we said, we're going to do one for 1%, 2%. Let me just change this into percentage points. So okay, so 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%. All right, let's check these scenarios out. And now what we have to do is here in this blank spot, we need the last part of our calculation. So what we're just going to say is equals our operating income. There we go. And now what we can do is highlight this array of cells, go under data, what if analysis and click on data table. And this now opens up a new window that is asking us for a row input and a column input cell. So our row input, since we've put our scenarios in rows, would be equals our original 2%, right? Because we use this 2% to actually calculate all of these fields. Click OK. And now we get a full fully calculated data table. Again, just change everything to numbers. And we can see that all the all the numbers here correspond to the ones that we have here 
in the number two column. And what, what we can now easily see is what would be the increase in our operating income if our sales team would, let's say, only manage to make our revenues grow for 1%. And what you can clearly see is that this wouldn't be a good return on our investment, which means that what we want to do is really motivate them to make at least 2%. So what we could say is we can make this our forecast. We can make this our downside, right? And if they're gonna do really good, so like 3% increase in revenues, this will be our upside. And now what we made, we made three scenarios that we can compare to our actual numbers. All right guys, before we visualize the data, let me just remind you to like the video and please write more topics that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Now back to the video. So now that we have these calculations made, what we can do is we can turn this into a table so just make it a table, all right, change it to be a little bit nicer and then insert something to visualize our data. And if we go here under my add-ins, choose of course Zebra BI and now we can even visualize our scenarios to have a little bit of a better understanding of exactly what's going on. So say this, this and then we're going to do this somewhere else. Result post management, inverted operating expenses, and result operating income. Like that, and we'll just make this a portal chart because it's everything's doing a lot better and it makes sense. And there we go. So what we can see now is that our forecast is showing us a rise in revenues and a rise in gross margin, but is also showing that our operating expenses will grow. However, in the end, we will have more operating income, which means that we'll get a return on our investment. So now after visualizing this, what we can do is simply input here our downside, let's say 1%, visualize this or visualize our upside. And of course, since uh, we want to be very, very positive, uh, we would go into our PowerPoint presentation for our next weekly meeting, go under my add-ins and insert a Zebra BI table. There we go. We can use a comparison one and we'll link data to Excel. We just have to find a file, so there we go, and click on the data, and then we'll see the actual portal over here, we just have to, I'm just going to check the data before, invert, result, invert, result, and there we go. And there we go. Now we have a beautiful visual representation of our scenario. Thank you for watching. We created a simple scenario analysis going all the way from Power BI to PowerPoint. Don't forget to like the video to boost the algorithm and also don't forget to download your Zebra BI visualizations for Excel in the description below completely free. Also be sure to check out our interactive Excel dashboard video where we turn Excel into Power BI with just a little help from Zebra BI. See you soon data wizards.